Three days ago, Xin Yang was walking down the street. On the way there was a well in the ground, surrounded by stones. The young man did not notice him and fell right into the hole. It was very deep, but as it turned out there was a lot of space under it, resembling a cave. Landing on his stomach, the guy began to inhale and scream in pain, because he was flying from a considerable height. His clothes were torn in places, and his leg hurt terribly. He grabbed it and screamed in pain. The leg was broken. The guy rolled over on his back with all his might and realized that he would not be able to get out of this place, because he was far underground. Shenny began to reflect on the time of his stay in this place and was quite surprised when he realized that he could not realize it, only to make an assumption that it was either 2 o'clock or 10. The young man tried to get to his feet many times, but it didn't work out for him. He understood that this would not be of any use, because the well into which he fell was too deep, and he would not be able to just get out of it. Shenny got up on his knees and thought about who could save him, but immediately concluded that he had no idea if people knew about this well and the place. The young man also concluded that it was better to die than to be humiliated by Zion's gang. It was night. Four people were standing near a huge tree wrapped in a thick rope. One of them was arrested. He stood with his arms crossed, holding a branch in one of them. There were three other people standing behind him. Everyone was dressed the same, a gray long shirt with a black belt. One of the guys decided to warn about the danger. He explained that now they are in a forbidden territory, about which not very pleasant rumors have spread. People say that monsters live in it. Should they continue to wait until the person they came for comes out? To which Zion replied that he would not leave in any case, because that person dared not take him seriously. Zion promised that as soon as he came out, he would immediately lose his head. This was said with special anger, but right after that the guy said that he was completely sure that this guy would not be able to sit there forever. The man reminded Zion that they were already standing there all evening, and if the old man also noticed them, they would not be well. Zion was angered by this and he shouted that they had absolutely nothing to fear, because the old man was busy with his business with Widow Jan. Hence he concluded that he could not be expected today. The guy noticed that there are no prohibitions for him, since some pussy dared to come here, it means he will succeed, because he is no worse than him. Zayawanu took the first confident step towards the path to the forbidden place and ordered others to stop believing in nonsense. Still, one of his guys repeated the rumors about the monster living inside. Meanwhile, a large flock of black and red crows swooped down on them. All the guys were seriously scared, thinking that it was a monster. They began to run away from that place in a panic. Zion began to think about himself and assumed that something bad had happened. He had a feeling that it came from somewhere and not just by chance. Meanwhile, Shenny was also lying in the well and remembered Angela, how Zion humiliated him, and how then after that Angela anxiously clarified whether Zion was really doing this to him again. The guy was lying down and felt very hungry, because there was not enough of her lying here. Accidentally, his hand touched something soft. He assumed it could be an animal, but panicked when he realized that there was someone in the well besides him. Cold sweat was running down Shenny's cheek, and when he saw someone's mouth with huge teeth, he was terribly scared. His heart began to pound wildly, and he himself could not move from fear. The guy realized it was a monster. He was scared, he couldn't believe that he was going to die now. Mentally, he began to calm himself, to convince himself that there was nothing to be afraid of. After recovering a little, Shenny began to think. The guy was thinking about why the monster was here, and what was wrong with him. After he noticed the chain on the monster, but did not understand who put him here and for what. Shenny stood up and decided to throw a stone at him to check if he was alive. The monster did not move, hence the guy concluded that he was dead. Ten days have passed. The monster also lies and does not move. Not a single sound was heard from him. The guy is sitting next to him and realizes that he will not be able to get out. Shenny doesn't even have water, let alone food, and the well is too deep. He can't get out of this trap. The young man was in deep despair. He understood that he would never get out of here again. He would never see Angela. His eyes filled with tears. He mentally apologized to Angela for not coming back to her anymore. He began to remember all the moments associated with Angela. One day after his escape, she asked the guy if he really decided to run away. When other Shenny were bullied as a child, shouting that he was useless trash, Angela approached him to treat his wounds, telling him to be more careful in the future. He remembered all the happy moments with her, even when they were walking, and she took him in her arms. When Shenny ran away, Angela asked him not to do that anymore, saying that he would always be with him. But now it's all ruined, because he's in a well from which it's impossible to get out. But then he realized that he couldn't just give up, he had to survive. In case of failure, Zion's gang could get to Angela and hurt her, which was what he was most afraid of. 
He wanted the best for Angela and it was impossible to call this to happen. Besides, he also did not want to let them kill themselves. He told himself every time that he had to survive, that he couldn't just die like that. There was no way out for Shenny, but the craving for life was present, so despite everything, the young man ate the demon's flesh. He ate it quickly, swallowing it in large chunks so as not to feel this disgusting taste and get sated faster. But the fact that he had just eaten was terrible, perhaps as was the taste of raw demon meat. He was shoving writing into himself almost by force, while some flew to the ground from his mouth. Over time, he got used to the taste of monster meat, even said it wasn't so bad. Pulling away from the dead monster a little, he thought to himself about Angela. The guy begged the girl to wait for him, but then blood started pouring out of his mouth. He screamed at the top of his voice in pain, leaning on his hands. He began to be overwhelmed by a huge force that completely engulfed his entire body. His appearance has also changed. Horns protruded from his head, his hands became black, with sharp fingers. There were also holes in them from which purple light was coming. The guy looked up and easily reached the base of the well with his hand, because it began to stretch like gum. Shenny quickly went upstairs, pulling his arm back into its former shape. When he was outside, his appearance turned back to the old one. Shenny realized that he had finally climbed out and was very happy. The guy looked at his hands and did not understand whether it was a dream or whether he had turned into a monster and received some kind of power. Shenny assumed that he had turned into that monster and thought, if so, then it was necessary to hide it from other people. At this time, a man was standing behind him, who was watching everything that was happening from behind a tree. He was horrified when he realized that this boy was a monster, and then decided to report this to the village headman for safety. At that moment, a butterfly flew into Shenny's mouth. He did not realize that he had just accidentally swallowed, but the butterfly was eaten. Big wings appeared behind the guy's back, the same as that butterfly had once. He started screaming in fright, saying that he was afraid of heights, ordering them to let him go to the ground. And so it happened, with a crash he fell, so much so that all the birds in the neighborhood scattered. For millions of years, humans and demons have been living in hatred for each other. One day, people who called themselves the Chosen Ones received a special power, a glimmer of light. This power was suitable for fighting demons. The Chosen Ones decided to expel all monsters from their lands in order to kill them forever. Each demon had its own level of strength, so people put a seal on the strongest demons. There is a legend in the world about an organization called the Cage. Its members have sealed 18 demons all over the world. These people, always wandering outside the mundane, but everywhere, were incredibly strong and mysterious. Thanks to them, humanity has enjoyed happiness and tranquility for hundreds of years, but monsters are still hiding in the most impenetrable darkness of this world. A girl named Angela is standing at a large house in the village of Taoyan, looking down thoughtfully. After the girl asked for help from the council to find Shenny, she left the room and saw a guy standing near the fence and saying her name. Without hesitation, Angela ran into his arms, glad that he was alive. Shenny stroked her head and said with a grin that everything was fine with him. He was holding a rabbit behind his back. Previously, the guy brought her the corpses of small animals as a gift, and she blamed him for it. The girl thought it was knifing. But now the guy had the opportunity to bring live wild animals for Angela, so without hesitation he handed her a rabbit, saying that it was his gift. Suddenly, the girl, seeing the danger behind Shenny, sharply exclaimed that he should take care of himself. The guy turned around sharply and immediately fell into a trap of ropes. Angela began to worry very much about him. Xiaoan and his gang were standing behind him. They specially made this trap to capture Shenny. The leader of this gang, looking complacently at the guy who fell into his trap, mocked. Xiaoan noticed that now the young man would not be able to just run away, as happened then. Mocking, he was surprised at the behavior of Shenny, because he finally matured, since he did not dare to leave the forest when they were guarding him. But he came to his girlfriend. Resolutely, the guy voiced his desire. He longed for Shenny to beg him for mercy by kneeling before him. At this time, Angela was very worried shouting to the leader of the gang to come to his senses and let the guy go. But he did not understand her, because he believed that there was nothing good in a young man trapped in a trap and she was taking care of him in vain. After that, Zion approached the girl and put his arm around her shoulders, saying that it was better for her to stay with him, arguing that she should like everything. The girl tried to escape from his arms, screaming for him to let her go, but Zion did not let go. Shenny was watching everything from the trap. He was furious after seeing Zion's behavior towards Angela, so he decided to use his power by ordering her to leave. The trap was destroyed in an instant, which made everyone scared. Our main character did not want to show people his essence, but this attitude of his enemy towards his beloved forced him. 
people ran away screaming, mistaking the guy for a monster. Shenny abruptly flew up to the leader of the gang and knocked him to the ground, grabbing the guy by the throat. He almost wanted to kill Xiaoan, but the latter begged him for mercy. The young man did not understand how someone like him could be spared because it was from him for many years that Shenny had suffered various humiliations that could not be corrected by a simple apology. He was glad that his enemy would finally feel the fear that our hero had experienced for many years on his own skin. But the battle was interrupted after Angela's request to leave Xiaoan. The guy abruptly stood up and looked at the girl, gradually withdrawing his strength. The leader of the gang, wasting no time, got up and ran away in terror. Shenny looked at the girl, afraid that she would take him for a monster, and pronounced her name. She just said that it wasn't him and continued to watch him in horror. The guy was in despair and did not understand why he was mistaken for a monster. After all, he is the same person as everyone else. Angela, with her head down, was silent. Suddenly screams were heard. There were a lot of people with guns in the back, shouting that the one they were looking for was in front of them. Two people grabbed Angela. She tried her best to break free, ordering him to let her go, but it was useless. The man standing in front turned to Dewey, telling him not to dare to attack them. People shouted that the guy was a monster, and the man noticed that he had no idea what our main character went through. But he understands that people who have become monsters have no right to life. He offered to go to Shenny with them, but not to bear his claws. After that, the crowd aimed their weapons at the monster guy, shouting that they could not let him escape, because he would devour everyone, so he should be killed. Our main character chuckled to himself at the man who called his strength claws. Shenny said that there was no reason he would not go with them, because all these days he had been lying in a well, next to a bound monster, without a chance of salvation. The man replied that he had apparently entered the forbidden territory and encountered a demon eater, and the guy turned into a monster, so he won't be able to destroy his identity while in the village. He also said that the mission of their village, as one of the forbidden places of the seal of the organization cage, and that it is impossible to allow the monster to enter the world. Shenny said that for many years, when he was an orphan, he was humiliated by Xiaoan and others, but not one adult helped him. The guy didn't understand why he became a monster, because he didn't do anything wrong, but he was already surrounded by the whole village. At this time, Angela was watching what was happening with tears in her eyes. After the guy asked the man what kind of personality he then has, since he does so, the man ordered the guard to grab him and prepare a sealing sword, and the guy, in his opinion, finally became a demon. There was a crash. The village was attacked by monsters. People were in a panic and ran away as quickly as possible, while shouting at the top of their lungs. The demons were rampaging, and the man realized that ordinary monsters are grouped only when the primordial monster is active. But only the eighth devouring demon could cause such a big change, and Dewey has now really become one. One of the monsters attacked the man, but Shenny quickly beheaded him and noticed to himself that he was not a monster, but a man. Mentally, he begged Angela to trust him, because no matter what way, no matter what pain or suffering, it didn't matter to him, Shani wanted the girl to wait for him, and he, in turn, would appear before her as a person. Angela was standing in the middle of a battlefield of demons and humans, surrounded by a huge number of dead bodies. She didn't understand where the monsters came from and what happened. The girl decided to run away quickly, but suddenly one of the demons attacked her. A couple of moments and she would have been dead. But Shenny managed to kill the monster in time, cutting it into two parts. After that, he quickly flew up to the girl, promising to do everything possible so that the monsters could not hurt her. Angela looked into the guy's eyes and said his name. At this time, the man understood that Shenny had not only saved him, but also protected Angela. Hence he concluded that the guy had preserved completely human emotions and intelligence. He was very surprised, because he had considered the young man a demon eater before. An elderly man standing behind hit the man, saying that now was not the time to give himself up to thoughts. He screamed in pain. Despite this, he continued to yell at him, saying that he had completely forgotten about their plan. To this the man replied that he was not out of his mind like that. The second cheered up and ordered the residents to be taken away according to the plan, and he, in turn, would cover him. They abruptly gave the order to the first and second group. The first one had to take away all the residents, and the second one had to go after an elderly man. He exclaimed about the need to hold out and protect the others. The people confirmed the order in unison. 
At this time, Shenny, taking Angela by the hand, promised to take her out of here. The girl filled the young man about the others. He turned his gaze to the fighting people. People scolded, because there were only more monsters. Someone exclaimed that it was necessary to hold on until all the residents were safe. One young man shouted to the headman for help, as the demon was too strong and he could not cope alone. At that moment, the monster ate one of the people. The head gave the order for the warriors to detain all the demons. The monster attacked him from the back. But the man reacted quickly and cut off several limbs of the demon. But he grabbed another elder. People planned and began to exclaim that if they did not save the headman, then they would all be finished, because there were too many monsters. At this time, Shenny quickly flew up to the demon and, using his strength, quickly cut the monster and saved the headman. All the people were amazed. Our main character turned to the people, who were very concerned about the condition of the man. Angela screamed Shenny's name. Everyone was surprised that the guy was helping them, and not fighting against them. They realized that he was not a monster at all, and the headman noticed that it didn't matter if he was a demon. The village was saved thanks to him. Dewey explained that he had saved the village only for Angela's sake. At this time, the man noticed the frozen people and gave the order to move on. The guy turned to the girl, telling her to follow him to get away from dangerous territory. Angela agreed. It was heard how people were given orders to remain calm and prepare to defend themselves from another monster. Suddenly, a loud baby crying was heard. The child was screaming at the top of his lungs, lying on the ground. Angela ran to the child to save him, and Shenai tried to stop her to no avail. It was her brother. The girl ran to him and began to calm him down, saying that her sister was nearby. The child began to calm down, but still cried, saying his sister's name. Suddenly, a monster attacks the girl and the child from behind. Dewey, looking at this, panics and shouts her name. He quickly flies up to the demon, cutting it. After that, the guy runs to Angela, saying that he will take her to the doctor. The girl refuses and says that looking at him, she sees his fear. Shenny advises her to save her strength, but she began to apologize to him for her doubts about him. The guy realized that they could no longer be together all the time and told Angela about it. She abruptly lost consciousness. Shenny got very angry and let himself out of control. People in horror began to exclaim that the guy was not himself. They did not understand why. After the recent help, he began to behave like this. One person noticed that the first one should take a closer look and understand all the danger, because now Shenny was scarier than any monster. The guy turned his gaze to the people and flew up to one of the warriors, grabbing him by the throat. The man began to choke, and the headman shouted to Dewey that Angela would not approve of such an act. Suddenly, Shenny threw the panting warrior to the ground. The man screamed from suffocation and pain. The headman told about the need to seal our main character in a forbidden territory because of the natural laws of people and monsters, because the guy himself saw that the demon in him almost killed a man. The man didn't want it to come to this either. Dewey flew up to the girl and picked her up, apologizing for not being able to save her. After that, the guy turned to the people, saying that he would leave because he was not going to take revenge and harm them and there was no reason to worry. The headman explained that he only wanted to warn Shenny about the great danger threatening him and offered his last help. All existing monsters are descended from the progenitor. He has terrible power, and he created the strongest demons, and they summoned the rest of the monsters. After the appearance of these demons, demon slayer squads appeared. Thanks to everyone's efforts, they killed and sealed them. Among the 18 demons sealed by the cage organization, the eighth demon, the Devourer, has the ability to absorb. Once he was a real disaster, the Devourer was impossible to kill, so he was sealed inside the well, as well as the other 17 demons. Hundreds of years later, a village of several hundred people gradually formed on the place where chaos and destruction reigned, and it is the current village of Taoyan. The man explained to the guy that he could risk his life and seal the Dewey here, thereby fulfilling the mission of the village. But the headman saw how the young man grew up, and that he did nothing wrong, so he will keep our main character alive, and the village will order to keep his secret. But there are also many villages and organizations outside, such as Taoyan Village, some of them are much more serious and powerful. He warned the guy that he should realize this, because he would have to live like a wild beast, stay alone and in no case approach people. Shenny thanked the man and said that he was not going to become a beast, as he had made a promise to Angela. The headman interrupted him, saying that there was a way to become a man again. Dewey turned to him with interest. Mentally, the guy began to turn to Angela, remembering his childhood. When Shenny was little, Xiaoan and the others didn't accept him. Then the girl told him that since he was considered an outsider, 
He should not give up, but on the contrary, surpass them and always stand straight. Chen Yi thought to himself that now he, no different from the monster, follows the girl's words and is looking for an opportunity to become a human again. The headman told the guy that in the ancient records of the village of Taoyan, which they kept, it was said that only demons knew about the ways of turning people into monsters. The specific content has been lost over time but other organizations may still have records. The organization Kara is one of the strongest organizations in the fight against monsters. You can find them if you go straight to the southeast of the village. The man also advised Shenny to try to blend in with them without revealing his appearance, otherwise he faces death. After that, our main character set off on a journey to find a way to become human again and fulfill the promise made to Angela. Loud sounds came from the forest, so much so that all the birds flew away. There was a battle between a monster and people. The young man jumped from behind at the demon with swords in his hands and hit exactly the target. With a shout, people exclaimed that the monster should not be allowed to leave. After being wounded, the demon weakened a little. One young man noticed that the deputy commander slowed him down and this is their chance to win. Suddenly the monster howled. It was a terrible sound. All the people who fought with him covered their ears. The demon, taking advantage of the moment, tried to leave. But the commander of the squad came out on the battlefield, uttering a spell, a spiritual thread. Everyone was very happy about his arrival. Suddenly, red threads appeared out of nowhere. It was a commander's ability. He used them to attack the monster. But purple circles appeared above the demon, creating a portal. The monster climbed in and disappeared, and the portal closed. People realized that they had failed again by letting him go. They said that the demon was a little stronger than the devourer, but they did not understand why it was so difficult to catch him because he was quite weak and could not stand fast running. The warriors did not know what to do, since even the red thread of the commander could not catch him. The head ordered everyone to be calmer, even though the demon slipped away this time and won't appear for a while, because now they have another matter of paramount importance. Crazed crowds of monsters began to appear everywhere and everyone should worry about it. There are remnants of the smell on the red thread, and if you follow it, you can find the place where the demon was born. Having said this, the commander gave an order to three people, the trunk, the master and the pikes. They had to unite in one group and hunt down the monsters, and then deal with them. One of them approached the commander-in-chief with a question. Because of this, he was surprised that they had not left yet, and asked what he needed. The warrior asked where the commander was going, who ordered them to hunt down the monster. He replied that he would go to Yacheng to check the situation, because something bad was happening there. Meanwhile, Dewey was in Yacheng. The guy was mentally thinking about how he got here. The young man heard on the way to the city that a small group of Mengju of the Kara organization was going to select people for some task, so Shen Yi specially hurried here. The guy initially thought that this city was the same as his village, but he did not expect to see such high houses and a huge number of people. A group of people passed by the young man and by chance Dewey heard their conversation. It was not surprising to them that Yicheng is one of the main bases of the leader of Ra Mengju, because the city is prosperous. One guy noticed that the city became like this thanks to the patronage of strong people. To this, another young man told him not to be a jerk, but the guy explained that Commander Mengju is one of the strongest commanders of Kara. Our main character understood that he knew very little about the Kara organization and decided to eavesdrop on the guy's conversation. One of them continued to talk about Commander Mengju and said that he was very kind to people, but when it comes to hunting demons, he behaves very strictly, and not a single monster escaped from his hands. His red thread is able to recognize even the most disguised monster. The guy wondered how it was possible not to idolize such a strong man. Privately, Shen Yi suggested that perhaps the commander's ability would reveal his essence. Suddenly one of the guys turned to Dewey, asking what he had forgotten here, because he looked like a beggar in his opinion. Our main character remained silent and because of this he was pushed to the ground, shouting that they were addressing him. The guy noticed that there was a very expensive establishment here and ordered Shen Yi to get out of here. His friends asked him to be less violent, and the guy thought that they were somehow connected with him. He turned around and shouted at them to go inside if they wanted to eat and mind their own business. Meanwhile, Dewey successfully escaped from them. After that, they were very surprised by the behavior of the guy, calling him a strange type and assuming that he was mute. Because when they spoke to him, he ran away. Another noticed that he might have an urgent matter and offered to go eat. Shenny ran into a dark alley and, leaning his hand on the wall, realized that thanks to the demonic power, he rushed here to catch the recruitment of the group. He was very hungry now, but in order to satisfy his hunger, he needed to eat living creatures, otherwise it would be increasingly difficult for him to control himself. The guy noticed that, 
Fortunately, he was not particularly excited now and only needed to calm down a little and then return to his usual form. Suddenly there were sounds from above. Shenny raised his head and saw a spider-like demon that had caught a human in its web. He was calling for help. The guy quickly used his strength and, flying up to the monster, defeated him. He rescued the child from the web and, taking him in his arms, tried to talk to him, but he lost consciousness. Dewey understood how lucky he was that the boy did not see his strength and was surprised by the appearance of a demon in the city. Suddenly the guy felt a pleasant smell from the boy. He wanted to eat it, but immediately abandoned the idea. Meanwhile, Commander Meng Ju was standing near the yellow fog in the city. A boy ran out to meet him, joyfully shouting his name, saying that his car was in the fog. The man promised to return the car to the child, but only if he left here, because it was very dangerous there. The boy quickly agreed and ran, but then, turning around, asked if it was true that Meng Ju was currently performing a special task. The commander confirmed and asked the boy to fulfill his special assignment. It consisted in warning others not to get close to the yellow gas. The man asked if the child could handle it, to which the boy promised mandatory execution of the order. The child ran to warn others, and Meng Ju turned away, pulling a mask over his face so as not to suffocate from the yellow gas. Our main character was lying on a bed in someone else's apartment, and three people were standing next to him. The boy asked to explain the reason that the uncle still has not woken up. She told him to be quiet so as not to wake him up. Suddenly, Shenny opened his eyes. The child was delighted, saying that his uncle had finally woken up. The man standing behind turned around to call Miss Tanya. A girl, leaning on the bed, asked about Dewey's well-being. He only asked permission to ask a question. Suddenly the door to the room opened. A man entered it together with a girl whose name was Tanya. He told her that the guy had finally woken up. Tanya turned to Shenny, crossing her arms, confirming that he had woken up. She touched him, saying she would check on him first. The guy asked to begin by explaining what happened to him. Tanya noticed that the disputes also affected the young man's memory. After the young man saved the child, he inhaled poison and fell into a coma. But Meng Ju pulled him out and brought him here, Tanya explained. The girl standing next to him happily noticed that she and her husband were very worried about him, since the other children had already woken up, but not him. Tanya asked Shenny if he would allow himself to be examined after he found out what he wanted. The guy agreed, and the girl began the examination. She noticed that her eyes were normal, and her fingers were fine too. Then she patted him on the back and said that everything was fine with this, too, without serious deviations. After that, she removed the blanket, because there was only one thing left to examine. But Shenny blushed and shouted that there was no need to check anything else, covering himself back with a blanket. Tanya explained that she just wants to ensure health, and if he doesn't want to, then it's worth forgetting about it. Only then be sure to complain if something hurts. The guy exclaimed that he absolutely would not complain. At that moment, Commander Meng Ju came into the room, asking if the guy had woken up. The man asked Tanya to leave them together for a conversation. Shenny became worried when he realized that this was the same commander. The man sat down behind a chair, telling the guy not to worry because he just came to talk. The young man asked what the commander would like to know. To himself, Shenny thought about what a man might be interested in. Because judging by the doctor's words, it was he who brought him here, respectively, the commander could notice his strength. Meng Ju did ask if the guy noticed anything unusual. Shenny said he didn't seem to have seen anything, and the commander asked him to relax and think slowly. The man explained that of course it was not worth asking the guy like that, because it could have been just a small attack of monsters. But when checking that area, he found that a nearby flycatcher monster was found near the southern walls of the city, and by this you can guess that someone moved his corpse. Shenny was surprised that the monster could be moved, but he realized to himself that he had gone unnoticed. The man said he didn't know. He only saw the child and that monster. The guy apologized and noticed that he could not help in any way. The commander accepted the apology and offered his help in case it was needed. But in the meantime he said to rest. The man stood up, saying that the selection would begin soon, so it was time for him to go. But Shenny was interested in this and he asked about the selection. The commander noticed that if he plans to participate, it is better to change his mind, or he will die. He also said that the Devourer is the weakest among the 18 demons, and their ancestors paid a fatal price for him. They only sealed him in a deep well, hoping that he would not recover and eventually die. It's been over a hundred years since the Devourer was sealed, most likely he's dead. Shenny didn't understand how it could happen that they still didn't know about his death. The man noticed that people were too weak, even he sighed a little more poison, lost consciousness for a few days, because Shenny was very weak, and therefore doomed to death. 
The commander told the guy to go home and just live. The guy understood that he had no way home, because he became a demon eater and after that he lost his haven. The young man decided to do everything possible to join the punishment, because it was the only way to find an opportunity to become a human and return to his past life. Dewey went to the selection venue. There were many people standing there who were impressed by the appearance of Commander Meng Zhu. The guy was very glad that he managed to come. People were surprised by the rumors that everyone present came to the selection and had no idea how to fight this year. Suddenly, Shenny accidentally bumped into some girl. She turned around and looked at him with contempt. After that, Commander Meng Zhu came out and began to make his speech. He politely addressed all the people present, expressing his respect. After that, he introduced himself and began explaining the rules for selecting people for the Kara organization. They were very simple. It was allowed to use any methods to stay in the circle. There were 200 people in total. The one who can cope will be able to join the organization. After the speech, a salute was fired, signifying the beginning of the test. All the people started fighting and hitting each other with shouts, but Shen Yang initially turned out to be on the side of all this. One of the guys saw the girl that Shen Yi had crashed into earlier. He approached her, saying what a beauty she was. He called her little sister and noticed that she was alone, and there were many of them. Everyone supported him, and with a grin, they asked the girl for permission to take care of her. She grinned and said that she was very ashamed to be in the company of non-entities, pulling out her sword. She quickly overpowered them while they were screaming, saying that she was damn strong. This was observed by a group of people whose conversation was previously overheard by Dewey. One of them was surprised by the level of strength of the willing, because it was too different. He noticed that it was because of this that such chaos was happening. Another told him to be quiet and think about how to survive. One of the participants pointed his finger at them, shouting that his friends needed to attack them, because they were weaklings, and the little man was hurting them at all at death. The guy who was called Shorty was furious and attacked first, pulling out a crossbow, and shouting that they would know the taste of death after their words. They started screaming in pain, saying that he was very strong. Meanwhile, the man turned to Shenny, not understanding how such a weakling dared to come to the selection. He said he was obliged to teach the guy a lesson about how high the sky is. His friends from behind wished him luck. The participant told Shenny to get ready, but he only noticed that he was seeing him for the first time in his life, after asking what he was going to do. The man attacked the young man, putting his fist forward. Dewey noticed to himself that he was not being listened to at all and kicked him in the stomach, thereby stopping his blow. All the friends of that participant were amazed, and he collapsed to the ground unconscious. Shenny confidently stated that he was not going to waste time in vain. The guy confidently addressed people, telling them to approach him so as not to waste time. The participants did not dare to approach him, but suddenly noticed a man behind him, who turned to Shenny. The guy prepared for an attack, but the man walked away, saying that he was not walking in his direction at all. One young man from the group noticed his incredible strength and realized that it would be nice to lure Dewey to their side to strengthen his strength. But his friend exclaimed that recently the guy's head was beaten to bumps and he does not understand where he has so much confidence to say such a thing. To this, the guy explained that they were somewhat similar to Xin Yong and decided to watch him again. Dewey was glad that at least there was some benefit from his misfortune, because even without using his strength, he was stronger than an ordinary person. After some time, the closing of the selection was announced. The commander congratulated all those who remained. People were surprised at the quick end of the selection and said that they did not like the selection this year because there was a lot of muddy water. In the crowd, someone told Shenny that he should be happy because he got off too easily. The guy remembered that the headman was talking about what kind of organization Kara is big. The young man from the group said that everything was too simple, respectively, this is not the end. His whole face was covered in wounds and scratches, so his friend told him to stop talking so confidently when his whole face was so beaten up. The commander said that now all the remaining ones are divided into ten detachments. From now on, people who are in the same squad will live together, train together, and seal demons together. But first of all, he decided to remind that the life of his bandmate depends on the strength of each person. People were glad that they would not have to fish in muddy water. Someone asked if they wanted to take him into the squad, because survival is also a skill. Dewey wondered what these people really cared about. Suddenly, a guy from the group extended his hand to Shenny, introducing himself. His name was Sia. He invited the young man to their squad and said that after all, Dewey also noticed that the selection was not over and they needed his strength. The guy concluded that in such a short time, 
This simpleton was able to gather so many masters into a squad, because he could also notice his essence. But the greater the risk, the greater the reward, and perhaps this would help him pass the selection. Shenny agreed to join their squad and shook hands with her. The guy was very happy, because his squad was formed and asked if there would be a name. Sia began to sort out options such as a squad of mad fighters, the most invincible squad in the universe, a squad who stepped on the road of good and decided to destroy all evil spirits. In the end, he settled on the name Crazy Fighters. Suddenly Tanya came up to them, saying that she was the temporary leader of their squad. The girl asked everyone to follow her to their dorm, and Tanya also wanted to explain all the organizational aspects along the way. The girl explained that their main commander is Meng Ju, and the main headquarters is in Yacheng. At the same time, they took on the task of maintaining the security of the surrounding five cities. But since most of the official members of the organization are constantly on assignments, the guys will rarely see them. But soon they will also go on a mission and will also kill and seal monsters. One member of the squad exclaimed that he would really wait, and another specified when they could go on a mission. Tanya said it wouldn't be soon. Someone noticed that they are still weak for this. The girl confirmed this, saying that the members of the organization respect the strong and put strength first. But she and Commander Meng Ju believe that it is more important to be more vigilant, like animals. At this time, they had already approached their dorm, and Tanya left to receive others. Shenny noticed that the girl was not telling him something. He was supported. One girl noticed that the selection ended too quickly, and also the hostel can be a trap and it is necessary to leave quickly. No one agreed to leave here and she offered to stay outside and not enter. But Dewey said they had no choice, so they had to attack first. The squad checked all the rooms, but they didn't find anything suspicious. The girl thought that everyone had invented everything themselves and Tanya was not hiding anything. But Shenny said that he had already communicated with her, and she was acting too seriously, and also never says anything just like that. The girl did not understand what they should do, but everyone decided to just wait. Meanwhile, in the big building, Tanya was talking to Meng Ju. She noticed that there are many children among the candidates who have never encountered monsters. They will most likely be afraid of the illusion monsters. The man told her that it was better than letting them fight real monsters and die. The girl reminded that the authorities asked to soften the standards and recruit more people, but he does not listen to commands and scares off candidates in every possible way. The commander, picking up the blue crystal, said that there was nothing terrible about it, and he would take all the punishments on himself. The power of the crystal enveloped the city. The candidates were in a panic and shouted that they had a bad feeling. A demon appeared, emerging from a large yellow pillar of power. He said, addressing Meng Ju, that no one could have thought that he had already made his way to this place. In his opinion, this was supposed to add toppings to their illusory trials. He shouted that the fun was about to begin. Our main character sleeps on a bed in his village. Suddenly Angela runs up to him, scolding him for not waking up yet, because the sun has already dried his entire ass, and he should also be ashamed of it. The girl turned to her grandfather, accusing him of sending the guy for herbs, because that's when he fell. The man admitted his guilt and asked Angela to help him check on Dewey when he wakes up. The guy woke up and turned to the girl, saying her name. Angela was very happy, because he was unconscious for three days after he fell off a cliff. The doctor told her that the guy had hit his head. Dewey was confused, because he understood that the girl had died and told her about it. She exclaimed that he had really hit himself very hard, and Grandpa ran to get herbs, telling Angela to keep an eye on Dewey. The guy asked him not to leave, because he needed to talk to him. Some time later, the headman told the young man that he and the girl had been adopted by him since childhood, and they were not orphans. Dewey unexpectedly called the man the headman, which upset him very much, because he always called him grandfather. The guy repeated that Angela and he had been growing up together for more than 10 years, and a few days ago Dewey fell off a cliff while collecting herbs, and was rescued by the villagers, but after that he lost consciousness for three days, losing his memory. The girl confirmed and asked about his well-being. The young man thought to himself, not understanding how this is possible, because he entered the forbidden territory and became a monster, and then Angela died and he joined the punishment. The guy understood that this was true, and his demonic form was proof of that. The girl realized that the guy did not believe and took his hand, saying that if so, she would show him all the places where they grew up, suddenly he would remember something. She told grandpa that they had gone. The headman was very upset, because he had spent so much time taking care of the boy, and he was hurting him so much in return. Angela and Dewey were walking around the village. The girl showed him a tree, telling him that once, when the guy was five years old, he climbed on it and fell and then his grandfather scolded him. 
Also, there used to be a pit nearby, into which Angela fell during the rain, after which the young man immediately filled her up. Every summer evening the headman took them there for a walk, but Dewey did not like it. The guy began to understand that this was all part of the tests for joining the Kara, but he did not understand the reason for this particular development of the test. He came to the conclusion that all this is an illusion in which Angela is not only alive, but their lives have changed. Zivan was standing in front, shouting at the boy. Our main character noticed to himself that he was still the same infuriating. But the guy gave the boy a hair, saying that it was not difficult for him at all. Dewey asked Angela about why Zivan is so kind and when he managed to change. The girl did not understand what he meant, because everyone in the village has always been kind, and the guy is constantly chopping firewood and bringing food to the elderly. Also, other residents were very good, orphans were not left without attention. Suddenly, Dewey found himself in a dark green space. It was very frightening. Angela took off and explained that everyone can enjoy the gifts of the gods, you need to eat together every day, and now it's time to eat. The guy did not understand what was happening and asked the girl if this had been happening for a long time. Suddenly, a table, a chair and monsters began to appear from the green slime. The chair picked up Dewey and rose into the air along with the table. Monsters were sitting behind him and he and Angela. There was a huge amount of various delicious food on the table. The girl said that this year there was a wonderful harvest and all these are God's gifts. The guy understood that their village had never been rich in crops. There has never been such delicious food and alcohol. The slime monsters turned into beautiful people, but Dewey didn't seem to see it all. The guy didn't understand why all the people were beautifully dressed. Suddenly, a demon in the form of a human turned to Shenny. He asked the reason for the guy's sadness and whether he was happy. The young man was sitting on a chair, and near him there was a huge number of shadows in the shape of hands. They all held him, but the guy didn't resist. He was as if hypnotized, but still replied that he liked everything very much. Meanwhile, the squad was undergoing a test for joining the Kara. There were dead birds lying in the room. They were not far from the big purple monster. In shape, it resembled the roots of trees because it had a huge number of limbs, but there was no main trunk. The demon grabbed the girl from the squad, but she managed to get out, wondering about the seriousness of this ordeal. Some of the people trapped in the tentacles of the monster became mummies, and creepy laughter could be heard throughout the room. The girl noticed Shenny caught in the clutches of the demon and hurried to his aid, pulling out her sword. She cut the limbs of the monster that caught the guy, and she understood that her main priority now was to save her teammates, and then she needed to come up with a plan. The girl freed Shenny and started to wake him up, but he did not wake up. She assumed that he was alive, because he had not softened. She shouted at him to stop pretending, or the girl would kill him herself, but the guy did not answer. She pulled away from him and turned her attention to the rest of the corpses that the monster was holding. They've all changed beyond recognition. The girl did not understand how such a thing was even possible, and where this demon came from. There were a huge number of mummy-like bodies on the monster. They fell out of the cracks in his body, which the girl was very horrified. The monster's head was glowing bright red, and there were also many arms sticking out of it. Seer realized that they were attacked by the demon Santa and told the girl about it. She was very surprised and did not understand where the demon came from in the organization. The guy replied to her that it didn't matter, but they urgently needed to run away, because the monster was too much for them. Suddenly, the demon grabbed this and the girl. She told him to try to get out, but he couldn't, because the more Seer resisted, the more the monster covered him. At this time, Angela approached Shenny and said that since waking up, he did not believe her, did not even smile. But she was still with him and did not understand why he was unhappy. Having said that, she took off her clothes and offered to make it nice, asking if he would be happy after that. The guy got very angry, telling the demon in the guise of a girl that she would never behave like that. The young man used the force and cut off the monster's arm. The demon said that he wished Shenny a happy death and wanted to have a nice meal with him, but if the guy doesn't want to be nice, then everything will be bad, because he dared to cut his hand, so now he will definitely die. The guy was surprised by the demon's confidence and asked what he thought of himself. The monster realized that Shenny was not human, but did not understand how this was possible. The guy killed the demon, saying that his illusion is terrible, and the test is really annoying. Meanwhile, his comrades from the squad were in the clutches of the monster. Shenny reacted quickly, and severing his tentacles, saved them. They fell to the floor and, catching their breath, Sia thanked the noble warrior, because if he had not arrived in time, all the blood would have been sucked out of them. The guy accepted the gratitude, but then it dawned on the girl and Sia that Shenny was standing in front of them in the form of a demon. 
The guy realized that as soon as they got out of the tiger's mouth, they immediately found themselves in the dragon's mouth and asked not to eat it because it's not delicious. Our main character replied that he wasn't crazy enough to eat people. They were very surprised that he was in himself and talking to them. The guy told them to attack him if they wanted to, because he has no bad intentions. But if they interfere with him, then Shenny will kill them. He remembered the words of old age. The man told him that monsters would never be accepted. Sia confidently ran to the guy, but immediately, grabbing his leg, began to admire him, because he had never seen such a crazy guy with such a cool shape who demonized can remain sane. The girl told the young man to stop scaring Shenny. The guy exclaimed that he did not understand why they were not afraid of him, because he was a monster. The girl explained that even though he is a monster, he has kept his mind, so they have nothing to fear. Sia said he didn't care either. The guy told about what the headman told him. Sia replied that the man was not mistaken, because demonized people brought serious disasters to humanity. And there were also many ignorant people who tried in vain to strengthen themselves through demonization in order to keep others in fear. For these reasons, the authorities do not stand on ceremony with such people, they just kill them. And the headman of Xinyang is quite civilized, since he did not seal it. But also the guy told him not to relax, because he did not say that he would let him go. Our main character clarified what this means. Sia said that Shenny should help him track down a demon. He was called the Death Knight of Elton. The guy asked what would happen if he accidentally killed him. Sia shouted at him, asking how confident he was in himself. Shenny agreed to help the guy. Then he turned to the girl, asking if she would kill him or act like this. She said she wouldn't do anything, but she noticed that she had no idea about him and what form he was in. But one day, when he loses his mind, the girl will kill him. The guy agreed with her opinion. Suddenly, Sia noticed a tattoo on the girl that was familiar to him. It belonged to the humans, from the Eye of the Cree. The guy asked if she was really there, and realized that this was why the girl was not surprised by the demonized form of Shenny. Our main character asked what it was. They yelled at him, surprised that he didn't even know that, but then they started their story. Oko Cree is a city located in the north of the mainland, known for its high technology and crime rate. They say that as long as you have money, your crimes will be forgiven, and you can live happily ever after. It is very popular there to use mechanical implants for the body, and some replace everything except the brain, so it was not important for the girl in what form Shenny was, as long as sanity and brains were in place. Sia was delighted, because only the eye of the Cree could say such things. The girl pushed the guy away, saying that it was time to stop talking, because the demon Santa was still alive. Sia noticed that the monster's seal was outside of Yechen, so someone put it here on purpose. The girl said that it was not important, but what was important was how they would act now, fight, or run away, but where? Suddenly screams were heard. People said there was a low-ranking monster here. One person said that he would deal with the vine, the other that he would take over the other side. Suddenly someone exclaimed when he noticed three living people. Sia exclaimed that these were official members of the organization. The commander told them to go to the safe zone, because their second stage of selection is over and they will clean up everything themselves. The guy noticed that they looked too beautiful, as he expected from the official members of the organization. Shenny asked Siyu to stop playing, and it's better to leave instead, so as not to disturb them. The girl asked if the ceiling of the demon Santa would be visible in the safe zone. Shenny and Siyu replied to her that her interest was inappropriate now, and she was acting too self-confident. While they were leaving, the warriors were fighting with the demon. The monster grabbed many in its tentacles and pierced one person through, to which they paid special attention and were afraid. The monster started getting bigger and screaming horribly. Sia noticed that Santa is furious, which means she no longer needs a medium to return. Her strength was growing at an unprecedented rate, which means she was getting stronger. He panicked and shouted that they would all die, because there is no safe zone anymore, respectively, they have nowhere to run, so this is their end. The girl screamed at the guy to come to his senses. Suddenly, one of the tentacles attacked Siyu, but Shenny reacted quickly and cut off the monster's limb. The guy said that there were a lot of wounded ahead and they could join them. The girl followed the guy, while Sia stayed in place. He didn't understand why they didn't take his words that they were all going to die. Sia did not know what was going on and why his colleagues rushed into battle, realizing that they were waiting for death, because there is no difference where to die, in the front line or in the rear. The guy screamed, starting to get angry at himself, because he was very weak. Suddenly, Santa gathered in a heap and began to release her power. Everyone was scared, not understanding what it was. Tanya explained that this is the core of the monster and he is furious, so they will not be able to stop Santa. 
it shouldn't have been like this, because the demon was deliberately showing people his weak spot. The girl started installing the seal. One of the warriors shouted to Tanya that she was crazy, because she specializes in healing, not sealing. The girl replied that this is why people should help her. Tanya stood in front of the monster, activating the seal. The warrior shouted that it was impossible to retreat, but it was necessary to detain the monster. Suddenly, a demon attacked one of them from behind, but immediately stopped. Another remark that the captain and the guys must have found Santa's core, and Miss Tanya's seal would temporarily delay the monster's movement, creating an excellent opportunity for victory. Everyone understood that if the demon continued to absorb human energy, then Miss Tanya would not be able to seal it. Shenny, the girl from his squad and Sia moved into battle. Sia shouted that the target was at a height of half a meter, and said to use the rear flag in an arc. All the people were surprised by the power of the new squad. The guy had a distance measuring tool. He ordered them to clean up the places that they had not yet had time to calculate and break up the energy spheres as soon as possible. The warriors, raising their swords up, accepted the order and went into battle. Tanya sealed the monster. Everyone began to admire her strength. But the girl noticed that there was something wrong with the demon's aura and even if it was part of the core, the monster shouldn't have been so weak. Suddenly, several more appeared from one hole in the monster's body. Suddenly, a terrible force gushed out of the monster. The warrior said that if they continued at the same speed, even the captain's help would not be needed upon their return. But suddenly the demon began to move and pierce the guy with its tentacle. He screamed in pain, and later the monster started making creepy noises. The Shenny squad was amazed, because the seal was broken. The monster pierced our main character with its tentacle. His comrades were very worried, but the guy just said that the monster is very strong, but he caught it. He pulled Santa's limb out of himself, and told the others to leave the monster on him. Tanya exclaimed that the seal couldn't stand it, and the monster is now furious. She ordered the place to be defended, saying that the new members of the squad were in danger. The warrior noticed that they could still wait for the commander, but the girl said that it was too late and ordered them to stand on defense. Shenny stood holding a monster limb in his hand. He told his teammates not to approach, but to hurry up and destroy the energy ball, because that way he would no longer be able to absorb energy. Santa hit the guy, and then took him by the head and began to twist around herself, later throwing him aside. Shenny did not lose his head and, using his strength, cut the monster into pieces. The other members of the squad admired his strength. Sia shouted that the demon had already recovered all his limbs, because he had absorbed a huge amount of energy. He found it disgusting. Suddenly, Miss Tanya came running to them, shouting that they should provide everything to the official members of the squad and get out of here as soon as possible because they would not be able to cope with such a monster. Then the girl noticed Shenny in the guise of a demon and was very scared. He said that now was not the time to talk about it, because he wouldn't hurt them anyway. The guy went back to the fight. Tanya understood that it was necessary, no matter what, to detain Santa until the captain arrived. Shenny hit the demon from above, jumping above him. The monster fell down, and after that the guy continued to beat and chop it into pieces. His comrades from the squad exclaimed that everything had worked out, but Tanya said that Santa was still alive. The demon was lying on the floor half dead, and the guy noticed that he was very exhausted physically, and also hungry. Suddenly, green slime flowed out of the monster. She turned into people's faces, saying she was in pain. Tanya explained that Santa has absorbed too many lives, so she has gained some language skills and consciousness, and she also has many clones, so it will be difficult to kill her. Shenny said that this energy particle is really very tasty. Santa recognized the guy as a wasteland eater. The young man tore off one of the demon's talking heads, and she screamed that she needed to run urgently. Shenny took his head in his hands, saying that he was very hungry, while licking his lips. Santa screamed that he was a wasteland eater. Before he could finish, the demon's head was eaten by Shenny. Santa screamed in pain, saying it was too late, but she had to run. Suddenly, Commander Meng Ju came, saying that he had nothing at all, but now he would be able to put an end to it. Resolutely, the commander went into battle. He attacked Shenny, but the latter repelled his sword attack with his strength. As soon as the guy touched his sword, the young man felt terrible pain and screamed. After that, Shenny cut the sword with his power. The man hit him, ordering him to calm down. The young man flew away from such a strong blow. The demon, grinning, said that he had to run, because it was dangerous here and he almost died. The monster had to use the forbidden teleport skill entrusted by the master to escape. But suddenly Meng Ju used his power and grabbed the demon. Santa got scared and said his name out of terror. The man asked the monster where he was going. 
He ordered the red entangling threads to gather. They surrounded the demon, and he screamed in pain. After a couple of moments, the demon was cut into small pieces, but its heads continued to scream that it needed to run faster and spread out on different sides. Santa used her concealment technique, which she learned while being under seal for a hundred years. She thought that Meng Jiu did not expect this, but he quickly stopped her head with his foot, saying that these were childish tricks, and then crushed her. The demon was defeated, and the man said that it remained to deal with the most problematic. The man approached Shenny. The guy was bound by his ability, but screamed like an animal that it was delicious and wanted more. Meng Ju, saying that the uncontrolled beast that broke out of the cage, and he needed to go back, opened the portal, and then sent the guy there. Shenny said that the last thing he saw that day was Captain Meng Ju approaching him. Later, the medical staff of the logistics service carried him from the scene, although he was conscious, but could not speak or move at all. Tanya didn't ask the guy about anything, but she used all sorts of strange potions on him. Sometimes it seemed to him that she wanted to kill him. But after a few days, miraculously, Shenny recovered and began to speak, but from beginning to end he saw only her alone. The guy was listened to attentively by his comrades from the squad. Sia said that Tanya's mentor said that he had recovered, and later asked about his well-being. Shenny asked the guys why they came, but Tanya came asking everyone why they were crowded here. Shenny, lying in bed, said that he was protected by hiding his belonging to demons so that he would become their sword, smashing monsters. The commander standing in front of him, Meng Ju, confirmed this. Chenier thought about it and said that he fully understands that he has no right to ask him for anything, but he would like to add something. The guy was ready to become the sharpest sword, but Commander Meng Ju had to help him find a way to become a man again. Meng Ju realized that the guy was interested in the land of the abyss and asked him if it was so. But Shani did not know about her, which surprised the commander very much, because he did not know this, but still wanted to become a human. The man said that the land of the abyss is a place where a collection of books of the structure of punishments is sealed. There are many sealed books inside, about which no one divulges. There are rumors in the outside world that there is a book among them that describes a way to turn a demon into a monster. Many demons made their way to the land of the abyss in search of the book, but they all disappeared. Shani noticed that, most likely, these demons were hardly weaker than him, even if they failed. The guy told the commander that since he brought up this topic, it means there is a way to get there. Perhaps Shenny, before he gets to the library keeper, being their sword, will die faster at the hands of demons in the heat of battle. But it didn't matter to the guy, he exclaimed that he could wait. Meng Ju replied that if the young man lost himself during this, the commander would kill him. Shenny agreed and clarified whether it was true that while he was killing demons, the man would go to the land of the abyss. Meng Ju replied that he was too impatient and they would talk about the extermination of demons when he recovered from his wounds. The entrance to the Abyss Land was under the control of the Elders, so getting there was not an easy matter. In addition, there are a lot of books, so the search will take some time, but the man promised to manage quickly. The time of the visit came to an end and the commander began to leave, saying that the guy would remain under the supervision of Tanya, and then said goodbye, wishing him a good rest. But Shenny asked about the fact that many people had seen him turn into a demon. Meng Ju, interrupting him, said that they had died at the hands of a monster. The next day, the guy left the ward, but before he could walk a couple of meters, he fell. His teammates saw and asked what he was doing on the floor, not because of yesterday. The guy makes different sounds because of the pain. Sia told the girl not to run to him when she tried to touch him. An orange force was spreading from Shenny's chest, and then some kind of animal appeared. Everyone was very surprised, and Sia said that it was Sofiman. After the death of an adult Sophiman, there is a possibility of the rebirth of a new one in the body of the possessed. Young Sophimans look attractive and do not have a high attack power. They don't need a lot of food to live, and some of them may be intelligent, so they are simply necessary for traveling. Shenny thought about the fact that he is the same monster with the mind of a man. Sia noticed that they are very popular in the market, and one of them can be sold for 10,000 gold. The animal, making an incomprehensible sound, jumped off the guy's hands and ran. Sia began to panic that 10,000 gold would run away now and began to catch him. Others looked at it all and came in shock. A few days later, the squad started punishing training. She was no different from the others for Shenny, but some requirements were raised. Lei Yun often completed more than required, and the guy shortened the time each time. Fortunately, this was the last one. Gradually, Shenny began to notice that training was necessary not only to increase physical fitness, but also to work in a team. He and Lei Yun and Xia began to understand each other more often without words. Today was the most long-awaited day for the whole squad, because they finally got to Taxu. 
they stood in front of the cardboard Mengju, not understanding what was going on. But Miss Tanya came out of the figure from behind. She told them that they were obviously surprised because the captain sponsored their special training with this figure. But then Tanya admitted that she was just joking. The girl opened the door, saying that a real special training session would take place there. There was a very beautiful glow behind her back, and various guns were hovering there. It was the arsenal of the punishment structure. The task of the guys for today was to choose their own weapon. Everyone was delighted. Shenny said that the arsenal is a place with weapons arranged in a row, but he did not expect to see this. Sia noticed that the weapon was floating in the air, and also glowing, he was very impressed. The arsenal of the punishment structure was more dazzling than the one on the outside. Tanya said that it was not yet time for admiration and asked to listen to her. The most common weapons were blades, swords and axes, which the guys probably dealt with. These were also attached to the user, in other words, their strength was determined, user abilities, techniques, and so on. Since most of the squad members had needs for seals, entanglement, and so on. In ancient times, the great masters of weapons and rune masters developed a method of giving weapons more power. How to adapt weapons and runes to the abilities of fighters so that they could not only kill monsters, but also seal them and demons. This weapon had tremendous power compared to ordinary weapons. Even if the adapted user is a child, he will be able to show great strength when he meets a suitable weapon. Over the years, the weapon became more and more and grew to the extent that it gained consciousness and became a spiritual weapon. It is able to influence the human mind, and after integration into the human body as a vessel, increases the forces, bringing them to a completely different level. The arsenal's weapons store the best of the weapons industry. Each of them has consciousness and can understand the human essence. Some of them have even grown to the level of a spiritual instrument. Tanya told them to start choosing their weapons, thereby defining their lives. Shenny, Zia, and Lei Yun stood in front of the arsenal of the punishment structure. Suddenly a bright yellow light approached it. It was his weapon. It was big and fell on his head, and he screamed. Everyone got worried and started asking if he was alright. Seer replied that he was fine, he was just scared. Tanya explained that the arsenal has a unique collection in the form of foreign weapons. It has a strange shape, thanks to which it can be used as a weapon and as a means of first necessity. Most importantly, if you put an invention in it, there will be a chance for its successful improvement. These weapons were just from this collection. It had a cylindrical shape with beautiful patterns. Everyone was delighted with the young man's weapon. The guy happily told the weapon that he now relies on it in the future. Tanya explained that Sai has a high adaptability to this weapon, which is why it appeared so quickly. After that, she asked the others to close their eyes and concentrate for the appearance of weapons. Everyone did so. An aura formed around the bodies of Shenny and Lei Yun. The guy's was purple, and the girl's was blue. Tanya also said to hold your breath and relax your mind. A huge number of weapons began to fly out of the arsenal. It started circling over them. Shenny and Dai Yun both wanted the black blade. Finally, the girl managed to find her weapon. It flew right into her hands. Lei Yun confidently grabbed it and examined it. She was delighted, because this weapon was easy to use, but it was much stronger than an ordinary sword. Shenny continued to concentrate and felt that there was no weapon around him right now, but it would appear soon. A huge number of different guns were circling around him. Sia admired the response near him, but suddenly one sword flew straight at him. The guy ran away screaming. Tanya noticed that the response of the guns to Xinyang was similar to the response to the captain in the past. Suddenly the guy recognized his weapon and tried to take it, but it didn't work out. Everything collapsed to the floor. The guys anxiously asked the girl what it could mean. She said it was the first time she had encountered such a thing. Shenny said he would try again. All the weapons rose into the air again and spun around him. Everyone was delighted, thinking that now everything has worked out. But suddenly a certain force hit the weapons circling around the guy from the arsenal. Sia and Tanya realized that he was chosen by a spiritual weapon. The girl explained that the spirit of the weapon wants to recognize the guy as the owner, because there is a powerful force inside him. Now a new power is emerging in his body. A guy should be with the attractive power of devastation, and what is bad for him is normal. The guy growled and Sia, worried, wanted to run up to him. But Tanya told him not to worry. If Shenny survives, it will take his strength to a new level. Both forces in the guise of monsters tried to unite with each other. Soon, united, they disappeared. Shenny stood, realizing that he had managed to get his weapon. Sia ran to him, saying that he was a great fellow. Everyone started asking about his well-being. 
Shenny said that now he can use the power of the abyss more freely, but he doesn't know exactly how much. Everyone told him to try, and the guy pulled out his sword. Shenny swung it, hitting the air. After that, a dark hole appeared in space. Everyone was very surprised and did not understand what it was. Something began to click loudly from the hole which seriously frightened others. People outside were worried about what was happening in the Senate. Because loud and strange noises, they decided to go check out what was happening. A man was standing at the top. He said that he would like to take advantage of Meng Zhu's absence in order to add problems. But it seems that something quite interesting is happening because of the boy who turned into a demon. 